I once saw some things that haunt me to this very day. I saw the horse. A horse? But why was it so shocking? Well, perhaps you'll understand more from my perspective of the story. My name is Kwa, or Hans. I was brought up in Saigon, in a Vietnamese family where we couldn't keep any pets since my mother was allergic to animals. But that didn't stop me from adopting a love for animals because thanks to all of the countless of animal documentaries that I used to watch when I was a kid. Growing up, I was an ugly duckling who couldn't fit in because, well, my look wasn't pleasing and my academic performance wasn't really good. But it was thanks to street animals and cat videos that saved me from depression, from isolation, and from feeling lonely. And perhaps you think I'm a weirdo. Maybe I am, but hey, uh, it worked. It got me through 12 years of school. And somewhere along that 12 years, I received an invitation to my aunt's wedding. When I got to the wedding restaurant, not many people were there. But soon after, some came, and some more, and more, and more. And during the wedding, they were dancing, they were drinking, eating, children were running everywhere, everyone was happy, and uh, I wasn't. I felt left out. I was alone in the middle of a crowd. So I distanced myself from those people and wandered out desperately looking for someone, something, a companion to ease my loneliness. And I did. A lonely soul, one who was separated from its herd. A horse tied to a cat at the entrance. I quickly approached and examined the horse. The authentic, the authentic steed stood before my eyes as they watched in sheer amazement and childlike curiosity. To me, that was just exactly like in the documentaries. That horse was brown and it had black mane. And in the documentaries, it to be strong and healthy, but then it was skinny and malnourished. In the documentaries, it should run wild, be free, but uh, here it was gagged up, tied, restricted, bound to a carrier and left in a corner. It deserved to run around free with its herd up and down green hills drinking pristine water and eating fresh grass but here it was fed from a filthy garbage scooper with a mess of leftovers and tap waters and after it ate it was sprayed with cold water because i could see its entire body shivering the horse, as if knowing that I was observing it attentively, looked at me. And then I met its gaze. It had the eyes of a caged animal, one that had come to terms with its futility and has rid of its hope for freedom. Those eyes were heavy, as if they were carrying the darkness of a lifetime, the shattered dreams for freedoms and the acceptance of a future beyond its grasp. That horse had the eyes of a broken animal. And through those eyes, I could see the difference in the final destination between two very similar paths. Both the horse and I felt powerless 
on our way to that moment. But I had the power to make choices, to steer myself away from where the horse found itself in. Imagine being through a tough day at work. You gotta work overtime to cover taxes, as usual. Spouse just called, saying the kid's sick. Again, medical bills, oh my god. Teacher going on a rant because you're not performing well. Several exams are coming, oh my god, maths. Moments like then, home is the best place to be, right? And when you arrive home from inside, comes running out an adorable little dog, tail wagging, happy barking. And when you walk inside, there is a carefree cat taking a nap on the desk. And suddenly you feel like, oh, this is somewhat weird. And days go by, and months go by, and years go by. And before you knew it, that, that, that cat that became an important, a huge part of your life. An indispensable family member. And you wouldn't say a family member, would you? You may not. But out there, family members like these are being battered and broken sold and bought like wares and goods for mere money. Their lives are worth as a few pieces of papers. Every day I go to school, I have to pass by a hot spot of animal markets where there are countless of cats, dogs, bunnies, birds, more. Some of them are even less than a couple months of age, all rounded up and caged, left in the sun, in the rain, in the heat, in the cold, either they starve and die, or they are into a cat or die, uh, or they move on to another cage, to either live in hell or heaven at the mercy of the owner. And it has been five years since I first saw that animal market. And who knows how long it has been operating before I first saw it. Is this how you treat a family member? Most of us like cats and dogs videos, right? Some others like bird videos, but those adorable little animals doing funny little things that we watch for our entertainment to unwind after a hard day at work or at school. But does, is it worth it to put those animals into danger for our entertainment? Because according to YouTuber Nick Crowley, there are even fake animal rescue channels out there where animals like cats and dogs are being put deliberately put into life-threatening. No horrifying, life-threatening situations to stage a rescue for internet fame and money. A pet is a great stress reliever. That's why there's animal therapy. And there is something within a harmless cat, an innocent dog or a carefree cat that makes them so much better at relieving loneliness than a person can. And those people, the people who were saved from depression, from anxieties by a dog or a cat or a pet, knows how invaluable, how priceless a pet could be. Now imagine how would you feel if that pet, that priceless animal was taken away by a force unknown and you could never see them again. It is painful, truly. Because according to psychologist Julie Axelrod, losing a pet doesn't mean losing an animal, but it also means losing a source of unconditional love. And sometimes even a protege that's mentored like a child. I know 
where those animals are taken. Because if you don't side with those animals and act for them, Mr. Fluffy is going to end up in a slaughterhouse. Shade, Claudia, Snow, they're all going to end up on somebody's dining table. Animal cruelty is a crime so deep-rooted in many societies, for example, Russia, China, Vietnam, it has become the norm and is accepted. While in other nations, for example, New Zealand, Austria, United Kingdom, animal cruelty is considered a criminal offense. Bob Dylan of Vietnam, Trần Công Sơn, once said, còn gì đau khổ hơn khi người ta xem khổ đau là chuyện bình thường hả em? There is nothing more tragic than when people see misery as a trivial thing. The normalization of animal cruelty goes far beyond dogs and cats. Because out there, there are many more types, many more kinds of animals suffering the same abuse. Circuses are an example of animal abuse for human entertainment. An elephant, large and slow and clunky, is whipped, lashed, and tortured into performing acrobatics, even though they have a big size. Lions, kings of the jungles, prideful and powerful, now turned into a laughing stock. Rhino horn poaching, bear bile farming, are an example of horrific animal torture in order to extract some sort of resource from them for financial gain. A monkey, wild and free, now have to end up in a gruesome fate on somebody's dining table with its skull sawed open and its brain being poked at by fork and spoon. Animals have given us so many things that we need. They are the pills for depression when we need them. They are the companions when we are lonely. But in return, we beat them, we abuse them, we torture them. This needs to stop. Right now, even though I have not the power to alleviate animal cruelty as a whole, I still do things in my own capabilities. I couldn't keep pets in my house, but I educate my little brother about it. I follow and I share posts from animal rescuers in my communities. For example, Nyam Kutra Động Vật Sar, Saigon Animal Rescue Foundation. And I'm working to build funds to raise money in order to move into my own space where I could foster animals and I'll even YouTube channels in order to help spread awareness. What I hope that you could take away from this speech is that we need to understand that animals should be treated with care and respect and that I love animals and I have listed all the actions that I would take as someone who stands. Do you love animals? Oh, what would you do?